I feel so fortunate to be connecting with you today. Whichever part of the world you are, we are able to connect with each other in a meaningful way. It makes me feel very blessed. So this is the second episode of the gratitude practice. In the first episode, I spoke about becoming aware of the wealth of blessings we have in our life and expressing them, writing them down or speaking them out aloud, in other words, journaling them. And then to look at that journal or to look at that spread of blessings and to feel truly blessed and to feel truly lucky and to feel truly fortunate and to say that aloud. I had also said that the more we express our gratitude, the more we are programmed in positivity. So today we are going to do the third step. The third step is refining this practice, going into the subtleties, expanding it further. When we express our good luck, when we express our good fortune, we are deepening it. Now when we start refining it, when we look at the subtleties, we are expanding it. So let me give you an example. I usually have fruit for breakfast. So when that plate of fruit, I have it in front of me, whether I have cut the fruit or I've been so fortunate that someone else has prepared it for me, what do I see in front of me? I see the white of the banana with the purple of the grapes and maybe the yellow of mango or the orange of tangerine. Is it not like a garden on a plate? So even though I live in an apartment where we have no garden, I feel so fortunate every morning, truly, that I have this garden on a plate that I can relish before I even eat it. So that is seeing the subtlety in all the things we take for granted. Seeing the beauty, like it's like looking at the sculpture of a flower, not just looking at it as a flower, but looking at it as a sculpture, how each petal is so perfectly made, how the colors of the flower are shaded, how the stem supports it. So really looking with wonder at life, looking with awe at life. So as we look at the subtlety of things, outside my bedroom window is a big tree. I love looking at it every day because when I see it in the morning, I see different shades of green. When I see it in the evening, the color of the, on the, of the leaves has changed completely because the light has changed completely. As a matter of fact, I taught my children all the shades of green by just looking at that tree leaf green, dark green, moss green, all the colors which it reflected. So start perhaps looking at some of the things you have journaled and then see in that what is there that you can be truly, truly grateful for within it. So for instance, again, when I go for my walk in the morning, I do look at people. I, I really enjoy seeing people who are out for a walk with their dog. I see the bond between the, the, the pet and the owner. There is a lady who for many years has been walking the same route I walk. She used to be very overweight and she had a limp. Over the years with application and dedication, she has lost so much weight. She still has that limp, but she still walks regularly. So I draw inspiration from her. And when I see someone who's walking, who's maybe I can feel that they've been forced to go on a walk or they're feeling lethargic, it's not a good day. I give them that energy by giving them a big smile. Even now when we wear a mask, I make sure that the smile reaches my eyes so that they know I'm smiling at them. So these are the subtleties of life. So whatever you're grateful for, that the temperature of the water is right for you, that the temperature in the room is right for you, that 
in the work you do, the aspects of your work you love. In the people who love you, what are the things of beauty you see in them? What are the things you cherish in them? Refining it more and more and more. So, like for example, you know, the femur is the largest bone in our body and it supports the whole body. But it also, when we sit down, it becomes our lap. And this is the lap on which the mother nurses her child. This is the lap on which a child sits with the grandparent while they are being told stories. This is the lap on which I keep a book when I want to read. So this strong bone that supports me also gives me such tender experiences. Similarly, the eyelashes. The way they, they are not only a thing of beauty, they are so delicate and yet they can protect us from a dust storm. So really understanding the perfection of each part of our body and being grateful for it. Not just being grateful for a hand, but for each finger and what it does for us. And each finger for what it stands for us. Each finger has an acupressure point, which if we learn how to press it, can give us good health, can relieve us from pain. So the third step is to see the subtleties, to, to refine the practice. You know, my friends laugh at me because whenever I have to go to a hospital or a clinic for a blood test, I want to be one of the first ones to get there. Because if you have seen a, a clinic where they take blood, there's always this tray in which there are multicolored vials which are kept for, uh, you know, which are for different tests that are done. When you go in the morning, that tray is full. I even know the colors. They are leaf green, dark green, sky blue, dark blue, lilac, and several others, deep red. So I like to see it like that. It reminds me of a flower garden. My friends laugh at me, but I think it's lovely. It makes the blood test worthwhile. So same thing. You see the subtleties. You thank for it. Thank aloud for it. Feel blessed. Say, I feel so blessed today that the morning started perfectly, that I got up before the alarm rang, that I had time to do a little bit of meditation or to do a little, to read the newspapers or whatever it is that makes your day special. Do that, express it aloud, say it to yourself and say it to others. And now start tracing the chain of things you use every day in your life. You can start with yesterday's dinner. What did you have? So let us say you had a potato. So this potato that you cooked in the way you wanted, or it was cooked and given to you, came from a store or came from a vendor. So that feeling of gratitude for the vendor. And how did it come to the vendor or the store? It came through a complex transportation system. Because the potato was not grown in your neighborhood, right? It was grown somewhere else. So there was a whole complex system of transportation, of packaging, of loading, of warehousing that brought the potato to the table. And still beyond that were the people who grew the potato, who bent down with their knees on the soil, looking at each plant, knowing which would be the right time to pull the potato from the unyielding earth. The earth doesn't give off its um, treasures easily. So carrots and potatoes, peanuts, so many of these root vegetables and nuts the farmer has to coax it out of the soil. He has to find the time right because once he takes it out, if it is not ripe, he can't put it back in again for it to ripen. 
So he has to find the right time, he has to go on his knees and he has to coax the earth to give up the potato. Then he cleans it and then he loads it perhaps on a truck and then it follows this whole system. So this feeling of gratitude to the farmer, the feeling of gratitude to the soil, to the air, to the sunlight and the water because all these are required for that potato to be on your plate at dinner time so you can have a nourishing meal because of which you can have a good sleep and have good health. So each thing as we start tracing it back, so there is the potato but there is also the plate on which the potato was kept. There is the utensil in which the potato was cooked. Where did these come from? How did they end up with us? What were the metals involved? If it was bone china, what was it? Uh, you know, what are the things that go into making this uh, plate or this utensil? There was the heat, whether it was electricity or whether it was gas or whether it was an open fire, whatever it is that cooked the potato. So the fuel that cooked the potato. So when we do that, the, the, the garment you're wearing just now, whatever it's made of, if it is cotton, tracing it back again to the cotton fields, you know, right through the whole process of how it was created, it was tailored, it was stocked in stores, how you got it, how many people apart from us, apart from you benefit did from this whole process. This whole, it's mind boggling, you know, because you bought a shirt, the store that sold the shirt made a profit. Because it made a profit, that store can be open, it can employ someone to sell you the shirt. And then as it goes back, if it was cotton, as I said, the whole process of cleaning the cotton, collecting the cotton, ginning it, cleaning it, transporting it, getting it made into textile. If there are some synthetics in it, the people who dealt with the chemicals, often corrosive chemicals, uh, and who blended the two together to give you a perfect easy maintenance garment. So as we start doing this, we understand that we are not just saying we are blessed, we are truly blessed. For every small thing which we have in our life and in our hand, a whole lot of people have worked for it. It is the kindness, the hard work, the toil, the sweat of countless people which goes into bringing us a single pin, every small item that we use every day in our life. And by consuming it, we become part of that circle. Because just as they provide for us, we provide for them. Because we buy, so they get sustenance. Because they earn a living age, they can send their children to school. Because their children will get educated, they will do better in life. So the cycle goes on. And we are as much a part of the cycle when we give and when we receive. So this understanding, it brings tremendous humility. And not only that, when we see, when this becomes our worldview, it's very difficult to say, I had a lousy day or a day that sucked, or oh, man, it was really bad today. Because what was bad? What sucked? One part, one element, one thing, two things, three things, ten things? Okay, how many were right? So the programming goes. We don't look at the world like that. Our worldview changes. And because our worldview changes and we express this, this is very important. Even a hardened cynic, we are putting in their mind the seed of gratitude. They may sneer at you when you say, every day I'm grateful for water. Every day I'm grateful that when I put my feet on the ground, I can stand up and walk. Every day I'm grateful that when I eat food, I can digest it. 
they may sneer, but you have put that seed in them and they will become aware. And fortunately, the cynics are few. My experiences, when I express something I'm grateful for, the person in front of me also expresses something. So we enrich each other. We make life better and happier for each other. So go out, practice this for another 7 to 10 days, deepen your practice, expand your practice. See the fine, you know this thing they talk about, um, uh, the, you know those, when you sign contracts, the fine print. So see the fine print of life and what it has to offer. See the details. You know people say the devil is in the details. My experience is, the divine is in the details. So go out, see the divine in the details, mirror it to others, show it to others, make your life blessed. And once you're confident of your practice and you feel it's going wonderfully, please come back for the third and final episode of the gratitude practice. I'm so blessed that we connected today.